Hi, it's rant time. What idiot invented the T4 fluoro tube? You may have seen these in a light fitting like this, which uh, comes out of our bathroom, and it is basically failed. And the tube has gone. You can tell by that. You know the ends are starting to blacken. Uh, on them, so that's caused by uh, sputtering from the uh, filaments, and well, they don't sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, arc over as they um, should, and they're certainly on their way out. This one's like uh, 12 years old or something like that, and um, I, um, I didn't know this when we actually got this, but these T4 fluorescent lamps, they're a standardized width, okay, that's what the T4 is for, it's a certain width like this, but they are not a standard length. Unbelievable! What idiot invented non-standardized lengths? Apparently, I only just found out when I went to go buy another one. Actually, I tried to buy a lead replacement because we've got um, lead lights all throughout our house and this is the only one left in the bathroom that didn't have it because the wife didn't want to change it. She really likes this uh, fitting. It matches our Antarctic themed bathroom. Don't ask. Anyway, um, and we went to replace it with LEDs. No, couldn't find any uh, lead fluoro replacement tubes like you can in the T5s and the T8s, uh, for example, that I've got here in the lab. But I couldn't find anything for T4, so I went, oh, all right, I'll just go buy another fluoro tube. And wah, nope, every manufacturer has their own standard length. I, well, their own length, depending on the product. And for the life of me, I could not find another length fl T4 fluoro tube that fitted. So, ah, oh, bugger it. I'm going to change this thing over to LEDs. And so that's what I'm going to do here. It'll be very quick and simple. What I've got is uh, one of these lead uh, strips, one of these aluminium-backed um, adhesive lead strips. I got it from uh, JCAR, it was fairly cheap, and it has a nominal output rating of, I think it's 360 or 390 lumens, or uh, something like that, if you believe their figures. Anyway, this is a 12-volt uh, constant voltage strip. It is not a constant current um, strip. You can tell because this sucker's got resistors in there. So it runs off uh, 12 volts DC constant voltage. And if I was actually to wire in my own LEDs in there, I'd drive them as constant current. It's a more efficient way to do it. There's less loss and things like that. And I've done a video on that on the past, how I uh, lit up my back deck, which I'll probably have to link in down below with uh, lead lights. And I use constant current drivers for those because I manufactured my own uh, lead strips with um, star LEDs, those, those Luxian star LEDs. Anyway, didn't want to make my own. This was practically the exact length. Look at this. So the wires can just go down in there. And the way this strip work, uh, this thing works is it's got glass plates top and bottom and then it's got uh, these glass rods which then go in here on the top like that so it's all sort of diffused so it should work really well with these um, these uh, spot lead strips like this and your typical uh, fluoros, for example, I'm not sure about the T4s, but like a typical real high efficiency fluoro might be, uh, say, 100 uh, lumens per watt. So a 10 watt tube might be 1,000 lumens, uh, for example. I'm not actually sure what wattage um, this one is. If anyone can read their, uh, read their Chinese, is it? Then, uh, yeah, I don't know what the wattage is. I don't know. It might have been like 8 or 10 watts. So, And this wouldn't have been a high efficiency one. It would have been a cheapie. So it would have been uh, in the order of, um, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm guessing maybe 8 watts or something like that. Lumens, um, probably, you know, 80 uh, lumens per watt, perhaps. But even if it's 100 lumens per watt, that's, say, 800 lumens. This one won't be shouldn't be as bright as that fluoro tube in theory at uh, 360 lumens but the difference is is that it's all coming out from it's all coming out the front whereas these fluoro tubes like this okay it might be producing your thousand lumens or your 800 lumens or whatever but sort of you know half of that's going to be coming out the bottom and bouncing off the mirror there's going to be some loss and all sorts of stuff like that so this one, hopefully, eh, it'll do the business. If it doesn't, oh, I can get in there and always replace it with some Luxian Star LEDs or my own, you know, my own custom higher power solution. But anyway, I'm going to give this a bell and install it. I've got um, 
uh, one of these um, constant voltage uh, drivers is, as I said, not constant current. So this outputs a constant voltage of 12 volts. This has a 10 watt capability, so more than enough uh, to drive the strip we've got here. If I want to um, drive a higher power one later, I might go to constant current. Took a little bit of finding to find one that fitted nicely inside there. But uh, yeah, that's all I have to do is uh, stick this sucker in and uh, hook this up and hopefully that'll do the business. And yeah, if you want to see a comparison between this is a T5 um, bulb, which does come in standard lengths. And uh, and of course the T8s, which are having the ceiling, of course, they're the big uh, fat ones. But these T4, oh, what a mongrel. What idiot invented non-standard length fluoros. Oh, God. All right, let's turn it on, see if she works. Woohoo, whoa, blinding, but yeah, it doesn't seem hugely bright, but um, yeah, it's, you know, it, the eyes um, have a massive dynamic range and compensate. It's impossible to do a comparison like this. We have to just go in there and stick it in and light up the room and see if it works. And there you go, it's stuck on there like that. Too easy, double-sided tape. I think I was wrong with the um, aluminium-backed uh, comment on this. It's not, it's just relying on the regular uh, copper um, strip on there. All the uh, excess copper to dissipate the power. It's not a hugely high-power one anyway, but uh, it, it should work reasonably well. I mean, we don't need a huge amount of light from this thing, so, yeah, I think it's probably going to be adequate. There we go, that'll sit in there nicely. Got some double-sided tape on the back of that. And interestingly, this one is um, not a complete universal voltage, i.e. 110 to 240. It's 170 to 240. So it's um, only designed for, you know, nominal, uh, you know, 220 to 240 volt uh, operation with some, you know, brownout uh, <laughs> built into there. Why are they doing that? Well, it's going to be more efficient. When you design a wide uh, input voltage range from, you know, the 90 volts to the 240 you might be used to on most uh, sort of products, they're not very efficient at all because you've got to cater for over the whole range. So it's harder if you have the wide input range to optimize the efficiency over the, for this thing based on that entire input range. If you have a narrower input range, then you can more carefully design your converter, uh, your components, you know, the turns ratios, your transformer, everything else inside here, you can um, more carefully control and get a higher efficiency when you have that narrow input range. And because this is a 10 watt in a relatively small, completely sealed brick like this, then, well, you know, that thing, that's going to matter. So if they had the universal input voltage there, it most likely would have had to have been a much bigger brick and it wouldn't have fitted. But as it turns out, these are kind of like a pretty much um, standard size, it seems. Um, I found that when there are a whole bunch and um, this particular range here was available in different wattages, available in like five or six watts or something smaller, but they're the same physical dimensions, width and height, but the length is different on them. So I think it's available up until 20 watts or 25 watts or something, and they, they just get longer and longer. So, um, and this is basically the exact dimensions of the old electronic starter, which came out of this. We didn't use an old fashioned uh, ballast. We had an electronic um, starter in here, but um, yeah, it's they seem to be a standard size. Nice, unlike those pain in the ass T4 tubes. Urgh. And there's our completed light. We've got our glass rods on the front and the diffused um, glass top and bottom. So that should work a treat. Yeah, we're going to get some a fair bit of loss uh, through it, of course. But hey, it's going to be better than nothing. And the wife gets back her favourite um, light fitting too. Because, you know, it matches the Antarctic theme bathroom. Oh, goodness. And here we go, let's switch it on. I'm using my variable frequency converter here, which allows me to generate any mains voltage I like, up to, I think it's uh, 264 volts, there it is. And any frequency as well, I can do like 50. Um, it's got presets here for different frequencies, but of course, we don't need that. So let's switch it on, and uh, 50 hertz, 240 volts, ta-da! Look at that, Bob's your uncle. It's a Bobby Dazzler, it works! So whether it looks bright enough, whether or not it... Uh, uh, does what we want. I only won't know that until we actually install it in the bathroom. So there you go. That's a winner though. And here it is installed. Yes, this is the Antarctic bathroom. So let's switch it on. 
See if it works. Woohoo! Look at that. What a Bobby Dazzler. And uh, yeah, you can see the individual LEDs in there, but that's not a huge, like they're both reflected on the bottom there, and uh, also uh, reflected through those glass rods on the front, but I don't know, it kind of looks groovy. Nothing wrong with that. So there you go, we did get a, uh, we can't tell what, um, uh, you know, how uh, bright it is, because uh, it's <laughs> daylight here, as you can see, and uh, so we won't know until tonight, but that, anyway, should be a reasonable upgrade. And yes, we did get the um, high color temperature. We got, to, I think it's, you know, 6,000 uh, K or something like that. I don't know. It's, so the it'll have like a bit of a blue tinge to it, so that uh, it'll highlight the, um, uh, the other blues in the room and things like that. That's what we had before. It actually had, it was a high color temperature before, so should work really well. So there you go, little upgrade. Catch you next time.